What's going on, Packers fans? Big, big win in the preseason for your Green Bay Packers as they basically shellac the Baltimore Ravens to the tune of 30-7. to seven. Big afternoon for a lot of fringe roster guys. Um, I thought, overall, you loved what you saw from the backup running backs. From Wilson to Merriweather to McCrary, I thought all of them ran hard as hell, really put on a show, and they were able to do so because of the work up front some really dominating performances in the run game, at least when it comes to the offensive line, allowing these guys, I mean, across the board, Merriweather had 16 carries for 74 yards, 4.6 yard average McCrary, 11 carries for 64 yards and a 5.8 yard average. Manuel Wilson had 11 carries for 52 yards and a 4.7 yard average. I mean, that is a Good day of work on the ground from the Green Bay Packers. Now, some of that, yes, came late in the proceedings as they were trying to just get the hell out of Dodge. But I thought overall, really good work in the run game. Um, I thought both Bo Melton and Malik Keith, obviously both had touchdown receptions, but I thought outside of those plays, they played very well uh, all afternoon. The quarterbacks, you know, very, very hit and miss. Still a lot of learning to do. But I thought you saw both of those guys kind of rebound from mistakes, saw them lead scoring drives, put points on the board. Both of them threw a touchdown pass. An unfortunate interception there from Pratt luckily escaped real harm there uh, in the attempted tackle after the interception. Um, then you flip it around. Shout out to Kalen King. I thought you talk about a bounce back performance after what we saw in Denver. Uh, much more sure as a tackler today. And causing that fumble to start the second half, that's a big, big time play. Absolutely love to see it. And it's crazy to think that now the Packers have two games, both in Cleveland and here at Lambeau today, where they start the second half with a rookie causing a fumble to give their offense an opportunity right out of the gate in the second half. I mean, that's that's big time playmaking. You love to see it. Um, obviously, come off this game, the number one worry in Packers land will be the kicker situation with the horrific, horrific miss from Anders Carlson to end the day, who had been having a good day up until that point and has had a good week up until that point. But that is enough to sow those seeds of doubt and have Packers fans on edge throughout the season every time he's out there asked to make a kick. And yes, I think he will be out there. I know, again, the calls are anew to have him be cut and to go sign sign a veteran i think that's always fun when people sign a veteran okay a veteran you mean like greg joseph you know it's just uh at the point where i believe carlson will probably be the kicker and they will live with his inconsistencies and it's going to be really really hard at times it's going to be frustrating uh but i doubt they make a move there but we'll see we shall see hello to everybody in the comments Thanks to all of you who were with me throughout the watch party. Hello to all of you joining us afterwards. Um, let's start with Dan with the Super Chat. What's up, Dan? Did your band ever do anything with Vic Ferrari and his band back in the day? Well, Vic Ferrari was a group. He was not a guy. Uh, it was based or named after a character. Um, but uh, Ben, my partner in Motel Men, was the original keyboard player with Vic Ferrari. True story. But no, we never did anything together. Although... I did play uh, one keyboard part on Safety Dance once at a festival they did. Soder, thanks for the Super Chat. How great is it to be a fan of the Packers? Well, let me tell you, it's pretty darn great. It's not like, you know, it doesn't suck. You know, like I got to imagine being a fan of other teams is. No doubt about it. Go Pack, what's up? Clifford hasn't looked good two weeks in a row. Tend to agree with that assessment, though I thought he uh, rebounded well from some early mistakes today. And again, as I said on the live stream, there are moments where the other people on the field have to do their job as well. You know, now he starts one of five, but two of those throws are one of them is in the hands of his intended receiver and just gets dropped. You know, it's like a couple of those plays early. There's a defensive end right in his face there's a guy literally hitting him at one point while he's trying to throw the ball i get like you'd like a little bit more production certainly would like to see him be getting into a rhythm a lot sooner but you know it's not entirely on the quarterback each and every time his sons of lombardi nice what's your definition of a random packer 
it's kind of like art. You know it when you see it. That's that's about it. If it's a random, it can't be a random Packer if it's a guy that like you know is well regarded and remembered and talked about all the time each and every day by Packers fans. Like there's lots of people who you know Packers past who probably people will remember once you bring their name up, but aren't always on the tip of their tongue. That is a random Packer to me. Just to me. Carter, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. Random Packer safety Mark Murphy, who looked like the lead singer of Midnight Oil. He did indeed. He was one of my favorite players when I was a kid. And when Mark Murphy, now president and CEO, got the job, at first I thought that was ex-Packer Mark Murphy uh, until I realized it wasn't. Because they said he's a former player in the NFL. I was like, oh, my God, they got Mark Murphy, my favorite safety growing up. Or actually, probably my second favorite safety. But, um, yeah, then I found out it was the Washington Mark Murphy. Ron Lewis, the definition of a random packer. There you go. Love the show. Random packer, Ross Verba. See, that's a good one. Ross Verba, which you wouldn't think, right? That's a former first-round pick. You would think that's somebody that people talk about all the time, but they don't. And he contributed and played, you know, a nice long career with in Green Bay. Uh, what was the Packers running back that brought in midseason that was selling used cars and then took over? Jordan, I think you probably mean uh, Dwan Harris. Um, and he had a good stretch there at, at kind of the back half of that season and then was set to be the starter until they drafted Eddie Lacy. Dwan's a great guy. Uh, we follow each other on Twitter. I've had great interactions with him. We've spoken a couple times. He, I mean, I loved his game. Dewan was the man, no doubt. <laughs> Frank, thanks for the super chat. Random Packer, Aaron Farstar the third drops Mike. Amazing. Brett, whoever does not win the initial kicker job better be ready for a callback at some point from the Packers or another team. You're not wrong. That's the other thing. Like, whoever it is who ends up getting trotted out there, got to suspect they're going to be having people in for workouts each and every week throughout the season at any point they could pull that trigger. No doubt about it. Uh, oh no, it's turned into just a stream of random Packers. <laughs> God, See, this is the random Packer thing that like, it just takes over after a while and people just start naming all random Packers, but I, which I appreciate like Frank here, random Packer, Frank Zombo, that Super Bowl champion, Frank Zombo to you. I mean, hundred percent. I mean, someone just mentioned Mosby. I mean, what a day. What a day from the kid as far as not only forcing that fumble. By the way, how great was it to see a number 36 up the left sideline into the end zone? Would have been even better if he had just kept going into a Lambo leap. But um, such a big play. And then to come back and have another one. I mean, really good day for the young man. I would think that should make a good case for his inclusion on the practice squad. I know we talked about it during the live stream. I would be very, very surprised if he actually makes the 53, but every little bit helps. And he certainly put some really nice stuff on tape today. There's no doubt that they run pretty damn deep at edge. It's going to be tough to make the squad in that regard, but uh, as a, you know, special teams and or practice squad player, I think he's at least given them something to talk about throughout the evening and tomorrow afternoon. No question about it. Uh, Randon, thanks for the, uh, support as a carry the G club member. How about a motel man version of the carry the G jingle? That would be interesting. That would be interesting. Um, not exactly our style, but Hey, we can make it ours, right? It'd be fun. Joe, what's up? She said TV tracking cuts on Tuesday. We will undoubtedly have a live, uh, page on the website and the Twitter account will certainly be keeping track much like we do after the draft when we have a page for the reported uh, signings of undrafted free agents, we will definitely be keeping track all day on Tuesday. And then I'll be doing my Packers daily chat in the afternoon to talk about what we've learned and we know. Um, but yes, hundred percent we'll be tracking everything. Brandy closed practices from here on out. Yes. They held their final public practice on uh, Thursday with the Ravens. 
and then from here on out it is they will allow the local media in for the opening of practice where they're basically doing stretching and the media takes attendance etc and then after that um they kick the media out and they go to work Ooh, eric good question which packers are primed for a breakout year interesting because that's a bit like you know subjective as far as what constitutes a breakout right um but i'll go i'll go with chalk here i'll go with dontavian wicks i think he is going to put up big numbers i think because of the style of offense they run and how defensive coordinators will have to be somewhat forced to deal with so many other things whether it's the run game and jacobs whether it's the threat of christian watson going deep whether it's you know jane reed and his you know, motion and all the stuff he can do out of the slot, some of the jet sweep stuff. You're concerned about all of that as a defensive coordinator, right? Which leaves you with Dontavian Wicks lined up against, you know, sometimes in on occasion, either like your third or fourth corner that he's just going to toast, you know? And it's never as easy as just that, right? But they will have those moments and Dontavian is going to eat when those occur. And I, I do think there's no doubt you guys know I've talked many, many times this offseason. I think Christian Watson, if he can stay healthy, and that's a big if, but if he can stay healthy, he's going to have a monster year. He's going to put up big numbers. Um, no doubt Reed is going to get a ton of receptions. But I just think Dontavian Wicks is set to be a major problem, a major headache for defensive coordinators because I don't think he's going to be a the number one Reed more often than not. But he is going to be a matchup nightmare because of the fact that you're concerned about so many other things on the offensive side for the Packers. Damn, what's up, man? Thanks for Super Chat. Collecting turnovers on defense is fun. It doesn't suck. It's kind of a good time. And look, that's the brief if you're Jeff Halfley, right? You're coming into a team that was ranked, I believe, was 31st in the league last year with, what, seven interceptions? seven interceptions on the entire season. And I think they also had a, you know, bottom five in pass breakups as well. They were just never near intended receivers. That seems to be changing. It sure looks like this is a team that is going to be at least much more physical, much more aggressive and problematic for opposing receivers, not allowing them free releases all the time. There still will be occasional moments where that happens, but there's going to be a lot more um, for them to do as far as, harassing opposing wide receivers, sticking, trying to play sticky coverage and being available if the quarterback makes an errant throw or if they can make that cut underneath the receiver to dive and intercept it. They'll at least be in position to make those types of plays, which they most certainly were not the last three years or so. Soder, what's up? Thanks for the super chat. Great way to close out the 2024 preseason. 17 and 0, here we come. All of you diehards that are still here are great. Yeah, it's crazy. We got like almost 500 people hanging out here still after the preseason game is over. Amazing. Nags, play the carry the G song. You know, I am nothing if not a DJ who plays requests. Will we carry the G wherever we may be? So creamy and cold. And from the land of the green and gold. It's back on store shelves this week, people, all across Wisconsin. Go to cheeseheadtv.com, hit the beer tab. You'll see a map of the great state of Wisconsin, and you can find a spot near you that will have it. Do it, folks. Uh, Uncultured Barbarian, what's up, man? I like the concept of high-speed harassment. That's a pretty good description. Uh, there's no doubt that, you know, Things are going to happen where, okay, maybe they give up a play here or there. Guy gets flagged for defensive holding or what have you. But for every one of those, hopefully, you're going to get some positive plays, some plays where you do get a pass breakup or you do get an interception. I mean, look no further than the Jets, right? The Jets have a great defense. They have a secondary that harasses people. And they play a very similar style and scheme what the Packers are trying to implement this year. And yeah, you could make the case that they're a little handsy and they get away with a lot, but they also know that the 
like back the Legion of Boom days, right? Refs aren't going to throw the flag on every play. So you just keep being aggressive. Just keep getting after that opponent every single play, down in and down out. And again, yes, every once in a while you're going to give something up. But more often than not, you're going to take advantage. And I'm excited to see that come to Green Bay finally. Hopefully. David, 196-yard rushing. What? That's how I led the chat, man. The run game was a story today. They were absolutely dominant up front, and that run game worked all afternoon. Really good stuff. Buddy, what's up? Any chance of the motel men playing at Summerfest next year before training camp opens up? I would say probably 0% chance, but we'd love to do it. If anybody knows any promoters connected to Summerfest, give a shout. <laughs> love it. Um. All praise goes to the O-lines today. They stepped up. Gregory, no doubt about it. Um, we talked about it at the start of the stream here. Uh, the work they did, and not even just, obviously, as a unit making things work, but individually, each guy seemed to really kind of be in a much better spot as far as their pad level goes, Getting you know, working off of double teams, getting to the second level. Just... It was just nice to see the production, nice to see the pad level be a little bit lower. And hell, the backs had places to run today. Absolutely. Uh, Brody, thanks for the super chat. Couldn't watch what looked good slash bad for the pack. Good was the run game, no doubt about it. Um, there was uh, concern in the kicking game as Anders Carlson missed a, what, 32-yarder, shanked it way to the right. Um, Bo Melton had a nice touchdown catch. Pratt and Clifford were inconsistent. And trying to think what else. Oh, Mosby, the defensive end, had an awesome game. Definitely made a case to get put on the practice squad. No question about it. <laughs> Chance the motel men play Freedom, Wisconsin. Funnily enough, the last time I saw Vic Ferrari was in Freedom, Wisconsin. Uh, who do you think will be the core special teamers this season? Good question, Richard. Um, Tyler Davis. I think there's no doubt there. Um, Zane Anderson will be part of that group. I think Robert Rochelle had made a real case for himself, but he has come down with a hip injury, which is why he was inactive today. That's concerning because that's a kid who has played much better from scrimmage as the, as the summer has gone on. And he's a guy who has been looking like a demon on special teams. Really hope that's not a long-term thing because I do think he would be a core special teamer if not for that injury. Uh, what are my thoughts on Caleb Jones? I keep wanting him to get more work with the ones, more opportunities. I mean, he finally got out there today and buried people, but when you're burying like third and fourth stringers, it's hard as a staff to sit there and go, yep, he's made the difference and he's ready for action. I just don't think they trust him which sucks because they've given him little kind of spurts with the ones, but he's never really gotten a serious look there for whatever reason. Um, I love his game. I love it when they ask him to get out in space and he's like burying little or dudes, which is pretty much everyone on the field. Cause he's bigger than everybody. But yeah, I don't know, man. I do think he's probably reaching that kind of point where they're going to have to either commit to, okay, yes, he is, part of our kind of core, maybe our swing tackle, or, okay, that was our experiment, but it's not paying the dividends we had hoped, which sucks, but um, we'll see. Uh, Telford getting the start over him today just blows my mind. I think he's better than Telford, but they seem to really like Telford. Welch has had a good summer. Very much agreed, Jim. Yeah, that's, sorry, that's absolutely a core special teamer right there. Um and look, seeing him make plays from scrimmage is so great. Like, he's really improved as far as we, you know he can play teams. He's great on special teams. But to see him improve as a linebacker on special teams, that you love to see that. And it helps you kind of solidify him as your core, one of your core special teamers, because you know if something were to happen, you can count on him. If he's thrust into action, it's not going to be too big for him. Um, He's never going to be, you know, he's not going to be a dynamo. He's not going to be an all pro or anything like that. But he's a guy you know at least can help you run your defense if injuries strike, which is what you need if you are one of those core special teams players. Um, is Carry the G song a vid that I can share on Facebook? 
Uh, not yet, Jack. I know it's on YouTube, but not on Facebook. But I will, I will put it on Facebook just for you. Uh, watch for the Cheesehead TV on the Cheesehead TV Facebook page. Ann Arbor Eye, what a handle! Thanks for the super chat. Any surprise keepers in the defensive backfield? You mean the secondary? I think Kalen King made a pretty significant kind of case for himself throughout this game. Um, he had a rough, rough time in Denver, but really seems like he had a good week of practice and it certainly played a good game today uh, against the Ravens. Um, King, Ballantyne, Rochelle, two spots for three guys. Aaron, I think it's shaping up that way. Um, I got to admit, if it's all about, for me, it's about Rochelle's hip. If his hip is right and he's able to go, I think probably I would go probably Rochelle Ballantyne. But here's the thing. I love King. I think he's done, done enough to make the squad, and I think he probably will because he's a draft pick. And we all know they when it's talking about which guy to keep, who who sticks, et cetera, the draft pick almost always gets the nod, especially way down that kind of depth chart pecking order, whatever. Um I wouldn't be surprised if any one of those guys got let go and they attempted to put him on the practice squad. Um, Ballantyne in particular, I think, has played much better this summer than he did last summer. But, you know, King, like I said, rough week last week, really good week this week. Has he done enough to earn that spot? We'll see. I want to give a free concert watch from home. Keep a, for a, a fan suburb in the chat when we win this year in the Milwaukee area. How can we contact you for promotion? Calvin, send a email to contact at cheeseheadtv.com. That is the best way to go about it. Welch is always around the ball. Remember his fumble recovery last year at San Francisco after Nixon fumbled the ball on the kickoff return. He is a, a guy whose motor never shuts down. There is zero doubt about that. Stokes ball in is such a great revelation. Really ups the entire DB room as big an addition as Xavier. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. I'm in on Kevin now. Um, I'm in on Stokes. Let's let's say that. All right. I don't know if he's back. I don't know if he's balling, as it were. He's had a good camp. It's been solid. But things are about to really change as far as what's getting thrown at him. Team scheming up their number ones to get on him. Trying to obviously stay away from Jair, right? I, I, I'm i very positive on Eric Stokes. Don't get it twisted. But and there's a lot left to prove yet. And I think he's obviously won that job. He's going to be their number two corner. But teams are about to attack him relentlessly. How does he hold up? Is he able to be consistent? We'll see. I don't know, man. I, I'm like I said, I really like what he's done this summer. Certainly excited to have him back in the fold. All guns a blazing, no doubt about it. But we are far from saying like he's balling out and he's the answer there at, at CB2, at least in my eyes. Any chance we make some trades in the next few days? Uh, Sharon, yes. I don't think it'll be anything dramatic. Um, but there's always a chance, you know, as they're making their cuts, they know their guys are going to let go and they start making calls or they get calls from other teams saying is, you know, there's this guy down your depth chart. We need a offensive tackle or we need a wide receiver, et cetera. You know, can we flip you some kind of pick or whatever? Those conversations are going to be ongoing for the next 24 hours, right? I wouldn't expect a dramatic trade of any kind, but yes, certainly they could be trading away a guy or two, I'd be surprised if they made a trade to acquire anybody. Um, but yes, those calls are starting probably right now. <laughs> Brody, thanks for the super chat. Win every game by 21. You don't need a kicker. Truer words were never spoken. Uh, surprised to see Dillard not on the field. Gregory, I, I don't think there's an injury there. So my thought is that he's probably your swing tackle. Um, I know people are somewhat down on him because of his horrific year last year in Tennessee, and there's no getting around it. It was bad. And he didn't start camp extremely well. But I will say the last 
two weeks or so, maybe, you know, 20 days, I think he's played much, much better. And I think, over, especially over the course of the last the preseason, I think he's played extremely well. So the idea being, he's obviously not a starter, but he's there to come in if an injury strikes. You could do a lot worse in this league. I'll tell you that. So, yeah, I, I think, barring some kind of shock surprise, I think he's your swing tackle. But we'll see. we got cox has to be there yeah he's he's the reason that everybody excited excited about mosby is as excited as we are you know he's uh he's buried you know it, it, cox is probably gonna make it although i wouldn't be surprised if they just went with four um but cox is probably there so it's hard to see a path for mosby but yeah uh it's just a, a deep part of the team and that's gonna make it tough uh, guessing Dylan and Dillard are both on IR for the first four games. It's a possibility. Possibility. Um, what else we got here, folks? I predict a nine and eight record in a tough division. Angry casual fan. It's an entire. It's entirely a possibility. And that's the thing. I mean, I know everyone's talking Super Bowl or bust, but hey, man, a couple balls bounce the wrong way, an injury or two leave you exposed at a certain position, etc. You never know, man. I think this is a team that's going to win more games than they lose. Of that, I have little doubt. But you never know how a team kind of reacts and or gets hot. Like last year, they looked very disconcerting. <laughs> About a month and a half, right? Early in the season. And then they got insanely hot. That's not a given. Who's to say they don't come out red hot and then fizzle down the stretch? That's a possibility, right? And that's part of what I think Matt never really gets the credit that he should as far as knowing when to keep, you know, pushing and when to lay off and really knowing what buttons to press with his team. This seems to have a really good knack for it. And it's kind of hard to quantify, which is why I think people don't really kind of talk about it very much. But, you know, his teams tend to rise to the occasion down the stretch. Now, obviously, there are plenty of games that you can point to where they make mistakes or they lose because of XYZ. But yeah, it's hard to win in the NFL. And if you can win 9, 10, 11 games, you're doing something right. Now, you know, will, do I expect the Packers to, you know, miss the playoffs? No, absolutely not. I think this is at least a playoff team. But, you know, I just hope people remember it is a long slog and we got a long way to go. And just because you feel a certain way about the team in October doesn't mean that's what the team's going to be in December. Ask Eagles fans. Man, what did they win their first 10 games last year? And then they looked like garbage in their one playoff game. You know, they it, it's it's a long season and it's a long way to go. Lots of ups and downs. You got you, you got to you got to gird yourself so to speak. Mike says tough to evaluate the draft class this preseason. Yeah, it's it's something we've talked about a little bit on daily, but really disappointing when you have so many of your top draft picks injured for such long stretches between Edrin Cooper, Jordan Morgan, at least has gotten out there recently to do individual stuff as along with Cooper, but you know, you've missed so much time. It's hard to see them making much of an impact at least early, right? Marshawn Lloyd missing so much time after that injury in Cleveland. It's just tough. It's just tough to get kind of back on the train, so to speak, especially once you're in the season and you're not hitting you're not doing camp-like practices. So then your only action is going to be if if and when you get healthy is being thrown into live NFL action, something you've never done before as a rookie. It's tough. It's real tough. No doubt about it. David, perfectly stated. Let's just win the division first. There you go. Did LVN even play? I never see him. No, he was on the sideline. He's had a good camp. He's had a good camp. I think... He's one of those guys where he's going to be productive. There's going to be games and kind of stretches where he looks a little out of place. You got to remember, he spent all his rookie year learning a brand new A scheme, but B position, what was being asked of him, standing up, using his hips, turning and running, et cetera. All that's out the window. Now he's back to being a 4-3 D end, which is, yes, what he did in college. But, you know, it's a very different scheme. It has to do some different things. 
but I think his physical gifts, um, his ability, his motor, he's going to be undeniable at times. Uh, but there are going to be times where it's frustrating to see how uh, inconsistent he can be. Uh, the Packers don't have as much draft capital as previous seasons. Do you think they will use future trade assets to acquire players? No. No, I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked if they traded away draft capital to acquire anybody. Um, I mean, that's not to say it's impossible. Depends on you know what's on offer, calls getting made. But, yeah, I'd be very, very surprised. All right, everybody, I'm going to have to get going. I cannot thank you enough for hanging out as long as you have throughout this day, throughout the stream, through the game, here through the gut reactions and all your Q&A about Motel Men, which, by the way, I really appreciate that anybody has listened to Motel Men. That's amazing. Um, appreciate each and every one of you. Please do me a monster favor. Hit like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Cheesehead TV. We are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Hope you all have a great Sunday. I'll be back on Monday with Packers Daily. In the meantime, Go Pack Go.